Hello, Leo listeners. Cara here from leolisting.com, where I help English learners connect through movies. So today I am with a special guest, Lauren Williams from Polyglot Station, who is also the founder of the Language TV Club whose tagline is ditch loneliness and build confidence speaking your new language with TV and friends. So if you've been paying attention, I think you'll understand why I've invited Lauren on to talk to us in this interview. So Lauren, do you want to tell us a little bit more about where you're from and things like this? Yeah, um, so thanks so much for for having me um, today. And I, you know, it's funny, I come from a family that really doesn't have any other language speakers, you know, everybody mm. in my family speaks English, except for maybe my, my great grandmother and, and my grandmother spoke some Canadian French. Um, but other than that, really, there, there's no other um, bilingual or, or multilingual people in my family. Um, but I was just always very passionate about languages since I was a kid. I, I started learning French on my own. I bought a little CD-ROM from Berlitz um, and tried to learn on the computer. And um, I didn't get too far with that, but, but then I started studying it in school. So I studied French from all through high school and then majored it in it in college. Um, and then after that, I started to start to pick up languages on my own. Um, and so I started with Spanish and then moved on to Mandarin and Italian. And I've, I've dabbled in a few languages since then as well. Um, this year I'm, I'm trying to work on Vietnamese. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I just, I, I'm passionate about learning languages and I'm passionate about helping other people learn languages as well. Um, and also, like my day job is I'm a speech language pathologist, so I also do a lot of language work um, during the day all day long as well. Um, yeah, so it is just a lot of languages. So that's why my my personal Instagram account is called living on language because I'm literally just living on languages in the daytime and the nighttime on the weekends, just lots of languages everywhere. <laughs> Living on languages, I like that, yeah. If you could live off them, that would be great, wouldn't it? No need for food or money or anything, just just language. Yeah. Just, just let me deal with languages all day long. Wow, well, that's really interesting because I, I also studied French at university and, um, yeah, I guess you could call it, was that my, my major? I had, like, three subjects and French was part of it. So, um, yeah, great subject to study at university for sure and um, at my university like everybody wanted to become a speech and language pathologist after university it was like you know and I remember in the third year one of our lecturers in the linguistics department was a speech and language pathologist who'd you know gone into academia and so she was supposed to teach a module for for the linguistics degree of about like a sort of introduction to speech and language um therapy and she had to cancel it and it was really like wow. a big disappointment because everybody you know there were other there were people obviously they went on to study it afterwards but they were looking forward to kind of getting a little intro beforehand and um yeah so yes. yeah, yeah it's a great career um, mm. and really in demand too so anybody that does consider going into that field I I recommend it I I enjoy it a lot and I work with kids so the kids just keep me young and alive and, and happy so um yeah it, it's a great field oh that's cool yeah no I had a friend who wanted to do it because her sister her little sister had had speech and language therapy when she was a kid and my friend just used to like make jokes about it all the time because her sister couldn't say um she had a problem with pronouncing the the p sound in English and the f so she couldn't mm. say fork, she would say pork. And my friend would yeah. be like, oh, it was so funny. She'd say, mom, I've got pork on my pork. And my friend thought this was hilarious, but she she did actually go on to become a speech and language pathologist. Yeah, because she yeah. mocked her sister and she thought it was funny, <laughs> but she she actually was genuinely interested in helping people, you know, as funny as it is to mispronounce things, it's actually, you know, <laughs> it's not also not cool. So 
yeah no it's great yeah, it, it, it doesn't become <laughs> funny after like a certain age yeah, yeah exactly it's, like, cute. it's real cute when they're young and then <laughs> after a certain time you're like okay you need to say this yeah exactly the, the yeah the right way it becomes definitely an, a, a hindrance if you're trying to communicate so okay cool so living on languages all day long that's awesome studied French at uni but you're living in the U.S. you're based in yes okay. yeah I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire um not a very multicultural environment mm. um and so I've just kind of had to learn as I've become an adult and, and gotten older. And um, I did get a chance to study abroad in France um, when I was in college, which was awesome. And so during that semester, I was able to go to other countries in Europe. Um, and I've also been able to go to Colombia and South America and Puerto Rico um, and and Canada. Well, Canada was very close by, so I went there as a kid. But. <laughs> so it counts. It's it's abroad, if especially if you're mm -hmm. an American. Um, it's close for being for being abroad. Okay, so where did you study when you did that semester in France? It was in Cannes. Oh, okay, cool. Where they have the film festival. Oh, awesome! I remember when I was at school, one of my friends, we um, went to France to do like a sort of internship for a week when we were still at high school and um she was looking at the destinations and she got really excited because she thought that Cannes was one of the places that you could go and do your little week-long like mm. work experience and in fact no she was mixing it with Caen in Normandy oh, yeah. <laughs> which is very very different I mean by the sea but not as glamorous like and cold, yeah <laughs> yeah not as good weather uh yeah yeah no I had <laughs> I used to live with someone here she was Irish and she had studied abroad in Caen and she said she used to phone her mum crying every oh. because it was like just the this you know the university accommodation sometimes in France it can be quite um uh, like basic not very nice mm -hmm. and so like she said that yeah the sort of cité U where she lived it was really horrible and yeah I think the combination of that plus like bad weather it sort of was a bit grim at first but then I think she got used yeah. to it. She made lots of friends and it was okay in the end but at first she was like oh my god where am I what am I doing um, yeah it's so funny because we almost had the same like misunderstanding um when we first were going to to study abroad we stopped in London first before going to France for like the weekend and we met a couple of people from Paris. And so they were like, oh, where in France are you? Are you studying? And we, and we were like, huh? And, <laughs> and they were like, huh? And we're like, why are you studying there? And then, and then they realized it was like, oh, can. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, can. <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, we're just going to like hang out on the beach for a semester in Caen? No, in Cannes. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. All right. Nice one. Okay. So, all right. So you've had the chance to kind of go abroad a bit and um, study abroad a little, but ultimately, yeah, you're in the US, you're in a monolingual environment. I totally get it. I also grew up like that in the UK, even though the UK, like the US, is actually very multilingual. People don't realize this, mm -hmm. um, but but most people's experience is, is monolingualism. So something I noticed when I was on the Polyglot Station website is it says that you connect language learners through activities um, and without small talk. So like, why did why does it say that on the website? So the, um, the story behind that is really that I, you know, based on former experiences at, at language events or, you know, just meetups or, or those online events, you know, things like that. Um, you know, they always have a chance for a language exchange or, or even sometimes if you're doing a private language exchange with somebody, um, you don't always have like a topic to talk about. Mm. So it ends up being like, oh, where are you from? What's the weather there? Okay, what do you like to do? Um, and you end up kind of, kind of having the same conversation every mm. time, um, especially if, if you're not you know, continuing with that same group, that same person over and over and over again. Yeah. So um, that was kind of my big thing. And I'm not a big uh, fan of small talk. I've, I've never liked it. I'm very much an introvert. And I I just like to get to the heart of where people are and, and know 
who they are, you know, what are their opinions on things, where do they see themselves in the world, and um, so this small talk stuff, I just, I just don't enjoy it, um, so that was kind of like the heart behind the idea, um, and then the effects of this are, one, the Language TV Club, which is conversation with people, but you don't have to do the small talk bit, like it's structured conversation with a topic mm-hmm. yeah yes. I know you understand awesome. that awesome yeah no yeah. I hate and I hate small talk and I, I do see the problem with language exchanges it's like anything like that like business networking events anything where like people are just kind of brought together and then you're just like left to get yeah. okay on. talk yeah. like talk yeah <laughs> like you obviously have something in common but you're right like it just comes back to the same boring you know repetitive thing which is good because you do need repetition to a certain extent we all need to practice introducing ourselves and Mm -hmm. talking about certain topics but after a while it needs to go somewhere else otherwise you're just going round and round um in a in in a circle so I'm glad you mentioned that because I've talked about how like I'm a bit fed up with small talk and kind of that's also why I like using movies but to the extent that some of my students I don't know basic small talk information about them like I don't I know a little bit about their jobs but I don't necessarily know if they have kids or you know, there's a, you know mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't really matter because like you say we're just going we're jumping into discussions about movies and it doesn't really matter if I don't know all the details of their life if that makes sense so okay well let's talk more then about the language tv club um so you've already sort of touched on why you created it but maybe you can go into a bit more detail about that yeah and and so you know I wanted to create something that kind of took away that small talk aspect um and I, we've also played around with some game nights as well we mm. did a few on Instagram and I think I'm going to start doing that again because it was really fun um but maybe not on Instagram but maybe larger ones on Zoom or something um but the other part behind the TV club in general or why I decided to do TV and not something else that was a structured conversation mm. uh, was because I really enjoyed watching TV to, to learn languages. Um, one of the, the big things that I watched were like Chinese dramas, so sea dramas. Okay. Um, and I, I really love those sappy, romantic Chinese shows Okay. <laughs> uh, with, with the songs and everything. I love it. I love it. All right. so I would watch those and then have have nobody to talk about with it and mm. it felt kind of lonely. yeah okay well that almost makes me want to I'd had no I had no idea of this world of Chinese uh tv shows mm-hmm. I guess the Korean dramas are becoming very popular uh, you know even outside of just the circles of of, of learners yeah. but okay yeah. so there's a they whole those, world... yeah they call those k-dramas and then the Chinese ones are the c-dramas oh, the c-dramas okay Nice. All right. So yeah, so it's what's like a lot of people's experience. You sort of do something on, you try something out and then you realize, oh, there's something missing here, which is like talking to people. I mean, I also had that when learning French and sort of trying to watch movies. Well, for me, it was more like, like, this is just too hard for me. Like I need someone to sort of to help me more than anything. And also it'd be cool to talk about them, to talk about it with them to kind of, you know practice you know turn it into like a language learning experience not just watching but you know also that that speaking element um yeah. okay so you created the the club and you offer multiple languages right mm-hmm. yeah right now we're doing two languages a month um and our main languages are spanish french german and italian and then we regularly shuffle through english uh, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Polish, and then we've had some kind of outlier languages that just come up when when there's interest and a host available, and so we've done Russian, Mandarin, and Korean in the past, um, but we don't, you know, we don't do those too, too often, but I do love the Mandarin one because I, I learn a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, awesome. No, no, it's great. It was yeah. you as well for, for what you're doing and keeping you in contact with the language, then that's that's mm-hmm. awesome. So how does it work exactly? Do people watch the TV show beforehand and then they come to the sessions to to discuss it? Yep, exactly that. So 
depending on how many episodes are in the season, we'll decide, is it going to be one episode to watch each week or two episodes? Sometimes it's three if the, if the shows are wow. pretty short, like okay. a 30 minute show or something like yeah. that. Um, and so we'll watch the episodes before the meeting and then at the meeting time, we'll discuss it. And everybody gets a guide with, with vocabulary mm. and, and questions and it's the same questions we asked during the discussion. So people can prepare their answers if they want to do that, um, which I've, I've known a lot of people that have done that. So I think it is very helpful. Um, and then, then we talk about it in the discussion and it's the same group for all four weeks of the month. Um, and then it ends up like we, we cycle through the languages about once a quarter. So um, a lot of times it's the same people that come back for the next quarter as well. And I hope that eventually we'll be able to kind of run all language every month. Um, mm. So we'll, we'll see if that happens in the future. I, I hope so. But um, right now this is working out pretty well where people kind of get a break, you know, like, yeah, it is, it is a lot. It's a lot to keep up with. Um, and so sometimes they they just need to to take a break and then and then come back and be full force in their learning again yeah no that makes sense because that is quite a this is why I've always sort of not 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 used tv series I have used them for sure but um I do find the pace is an issue because uh, yeah if you've if you're doing one yeah one or two shows a, a week it can be quite a lot to digest when you're a language learner, but then it can be good in a way because it kind of keeps you on your toes and you really have to, it really forces you to, you know, to watch the series, to show up at the meeting. You know, I think that's also a a positive thing for sure. Um, So what are your, have you got any particular like TV series that you're a big fan of in other languages or movies? Yeah, I, you know, I love them all. I, I um it's funny because I go through by Netflix now and it's just all just all foreign language TV shows that come up as my recommendation. You trained the so algorithm. If I have any, you know, if I have any friends over that are like just English speakers and they're like, okay, what do we want to watch? And <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what about this one? That looks good. And then it'll be like in another language, and they're like, mm. <laughs> um, yeah, come back when you've but, like had some lessons or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I really loved, so with Chinese shows, I've really loved Meteor Garden and there's one, um, called Once Upon a Time and on Lingjian Mountain, um, which is funny because it's like a drama, but it almost makes fun of the other dramas at the same time. Ah, okay. Um, and then I, I like La Casa de Papel, um, Las Chicas del Cable, um in Spanish um Lupin and French mm. is always a good one uh we're watching season two for next month of a French tv club um and then let's see what else um the Italian ones are, are like kind of like here and there I'm I'm not always a fan of them um I don't know why but I mean I do enjoy them but um but they're not like you know, like binge worthy a lot of times. Okay, so like, right. Um, like it doesn't make me like, oh, what's gonna happen next? Like I'm mm. gonna watch it. Um, and one show that we're watching in German is dark. Um, and I don't speak any German, but I do watch the show with with English subtitles. Right. And it is really a crazy show. Um, I've and- I've seen it. We watched part of season one again. I don't speak German apart from very basic schoolgirl German so we were doing the same thing um, why I don't remember why we stopped watching it but it was yeah it's quite a complicated plot and timeline and there's time travel and yeah so it's yes. it's still it's still going <laughs> then because I, I don't think we finished season one but we we got the idea in season one of like okay here's the here's the thing that's happened here's the mystery kind of they've been building up to this and here's what's going on so um, yeah, I think there's three seasons, I think. Okay. Um, possibly more than that. Um, but I know there's definitely at least three seasons. Um, so yeah, so I mean season two already gets into like they add in a whole whole nother time frame. <laughs> like like maybe two other time frames. And, and so it it definitely gets really confusing. 
Um, and I really applaud all of the members of, of German TV Club right now because they're just doing some crazy complicated German and um, really doing a great job with it. I've, I've seen, you know, some people um, from like quarter to quarter to quarter and they're speaking and just notice like how much better they're getting at speaking. And it's just really cool to see to see that progress right in front of you. Yeah, to see them evolve. That's amazing. No, but that, I think that's also the nice thing about like getting together to to discuss something together is that if if the movie of the series is a bit complicated, if the plot is a bit tricky or it's a bit weird for whatever reason, it's nice to be able to be like, um, did everybody else understand that? Or like, why did this character do this? And like, or even things like, you know, I mean, there are like continuity errors in, in series. There's stuff mm-hmm. that happens. It's like not coherent with yeah I mean there's you know there's mistakes and and stuff because sometimes you're like well hang on if they hadn't have done that then actually um yeah it can all it can get very complicated so it's nice to be able to sort of discuss that with someone um someone else I think I it that's definitely come up many times where like some people miss a detail and then Mm. other people can fill them in and so it's a group effort like understanding what happened in the show and and like oh who was that person that we saw like three episodes back like even just helping recall certain details um so helpful and you you get a much better understanding of what happened in the show a lot of times we have people who who have seen the series before you know watch it on their own and then they come into it with the club and they're like wow like I didn't pick up on all these details Mm. before and just understanding the characters so much better now um and even just some of those vocabulary words that maybe you didn't have last time that you kind of glazed over and then this time you have them right in front of you so you realize oh okay like and even with some of the funny shows like um like the french so show deep poisson um that one like you know once you get oh okay now i understand why that joke was funny mm. like I remember the first time I watched that show, it just seemed really fast for me. I wasn't getting the jokes and I was just like, "Mm, this show's, you know, not that great. Um, But then I watched it with the TV club and I was like, oh, okay, this is why this is so funny. And you just get a better appreciation for the show that way, I think. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's why, well, my partner is French. So if I'm ever lost watching a French TV show, I can... I could just ask him, but we don't all have some at home who we can um, just just ask whenever we get we get stuck or lost or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it's nice. It's nice that you're bringing people together to to do that. Well, that brings me on to um, another question, which is: Do you think it's possible to learn a language just from watching TV shows, just by like passively watching them? Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I've heard many people that have done it, like, as a kid and like watching English shows, um, in particular, um, and that's how they say they've learned English was from that growing up as a kid and watching all those shows. Um, so I'm not going to say that, like, it's impossible. I Mm. think it would be really hard. I think it would take hours and hours a day probably of of watching tv and um you would probably have to like see the same thing over and over again and maybe have somebody that can explain it to you a little bit as well um so you know i think it's not impossible but probably unlikely um i do think like especially for the tv club i recommend that people have had some coursework in the language before they they try to join the club um just because it is you know tv shows they talk fast it's very Mm. um it's very colloquial and it's just um it's very rapid pace and there's lots of idiomatic expressions and jokes and things like that so it's it's important to have a basic understanding at Mm. at the very minimum of a language before getting into it Um, yeah, it's so, real. It's real language. Yeah. It's not um, mm-hmm. didactic. It's not pedagogical material. It's uh, yeah, unfiltered. It's yeah, how the language is. 
Right, exactly. Yeah. And I, um, so when I started learning Chinese, I used to watch like the kids shows in Chinese and, and just see what, what it would do. I don't know that I, that I learned too much from them because I wasn't too interested, you know, I wasn't very yeah. engaged. Um, <laughs> Age appropriate you know, like little, little cartoons about the days of the week and stuff you know <laughs> and I was like like trying to learn it but um but I was like nah, okay I don't you know I feel kind of embarrassed watching this um but yes yeah, so, I mean I you know I think it is kind of possible as as the kid and doing it for several years probably um but not not so much now. Like if you just want to like learn a language now as an adult, um, don't think you're gonna just start turning on the TV and just learn a language like in in a year or two years mm. just from watching TV. I think you would have to yeah watch it for like several years um, before really picking up anything. Yeah, no, for sure. I I I, I tend to agree with this that the examples of people who learned you know who well say they learned from tv well one they were probably learning it at school as well so it's not like they started mm -hmm. with zero english and then suddenly picked it all up from learning friends i don't think that's possible so there's school combined with like many many hours of practice that you can't really get as an adult because you know we have lives we have careers yeah. we have children you know we have all kinds of things going on that mean we you know we can't lock ourselves away um all, all evening in our bedrooms <laughs> to, watch, <laughs> to watch tv shows even, well, even if you know i think we do still watch a lot of tv as adults but you know watching it in a foreign language is not the it's not the same thing it's a, it is a lot harder for sure um and it's funny what you say about children's tv shows because well i've noticed that you know all the tv series you mentioned in the club they're all fiction right you're not watching because mm -hmm. some of my favorite things to watch on french tv are things like um i love like property programs we watch a lot of property programs that are in english dubbed into french for some reason we watch all these shows to do with like car mechanics and like they <laughs> um they buy old cars and then they renovate them i don't know why we watch that i'm not really interested in cars it's just something that's on in the evening and it's, it's kind of interesting to watch you know this process of you know fixing cars and i like a lot of true crime programs as well so um but i imagine they wouldn't work as well in a in a you know Maybe do you think there's something about fiction that works better for having these discussions and learning new language and practicing it? Yeah, I think I think there are some some nonfiction shows that could work. Um, but the great thing about fiction is that with each episode, there's like a new event that happens. Mm. Um, so it's a new topic almost every single time. Um, so like maybe the people in the show went bowling and now you, you can talk about bowling or like you know, maybe they went to the grocery store. So now you can talk about the grocery store. Um, with some of the, the nonfiction shows, if it is a series like that, like, you know, like a property show, you know, they're going to be doing the same thing every time. Where they <laughs> Pretty go much. And, yeah. the house and, and so like, you can discuss what, what happened and like, you know, did you like this house better? Or this house better? But like, again, like if it happens every single time, it's going to get a little bit repetitive. Um, yeah. But this I think be... there are some, some like, kind of documentary type of of limited series that could work for that yeah. um yeah like we're doing um well last night I was just watching this show it's an American show but it's called a hundred humans or something and they do okay. like experiments to bust myths about people you know like okay. who's better at multitasking men or women and they like put them through like funny experiments um so I think even something like that would be interesting to discuss yeah, it's got in more pot language, yeah. potential for discussion. Yeah, I mean, I think the only, probably the best type of nonfiction that I've come across would be like a docu-series. So like it's mm -hmm. a documentary, but, but spread over multiple episodes. So some true crime could work for that or also something like, um, I love anything to do with like um, scams and scammers and businesses with okay. scandals like anything to do with like Elizabeth Holmes and the Theranos scandal so like the downfall of yeah. Silicon Valley's youngest female self-made billionaire who turned out to be a 
a scammer, basically. Um, and there was also like the Lulu Row documentary. So this is about multi-level marketing, this leggings company. Again, it was a scam. I'm just absolutely fascinated by that. So I could talk about that and I would find that really really interesting because then you've got almost got those deeper themes of like you know why do people lie why do they manipulate what is it about like greed and fame and I don't know as for me it opens up all kinds of interesting questions that yeah a a property program just doesn't touch on these kind of deeper human values Mm -hmm. it is literally every week they knock down the walls they rip out the kitchen (laughs) very good if you want to if you need to learn like your technical vocabulary for um property building sites if you work in those fields it's kind of cool um but yeah there's not much discussion potential really (laughs) did you like this renovation yes or no Mm -hmm. and then you know what color would you paint them (laughs) off was that the 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 right place to locate the kitchen or should they have moved it somewhere else yeah it's not really uh, yeah it's not really gonna go very far for sure okay it was interesting to you know because sometimes we can like a show but it doesn't really have yeah, good potential for creating a, a club or, you know, a, a, a discussion club. So, yeah. 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 But I think, yeah, those docuseries would be, would be very interesting. I, I don't know, have you seen many in, in other languages on Netflix? I've seen a lot, you know, in English. But, I think there's a lot in English. Um, yeah. I don't really yeah. know. I also really love like shows like in French, you've got this kind of, um, I like all this, these kinds of investigative journalism shows so obviously that's kind of Mm. connected to the sort of stuff you get on you get in documentaries like there's a show called cash investigation cash investigation (laughs) in France and that's a really good um, investigative journalism show and I guess that could be something interesting to to discuss but um, I suppose it might depend on the topics and you know yeah, I was gonna say like because you also get a lot of the, the cultural background mm. with a like a reality show like that where um you know it's real stuff happening in the yeah country in, at in the, the country time, you know yeah, exactly. and you get to see you know the places behind it and and stuff and um yeah yeah I've also you know considered doing reality shows mm. where they're, they, um. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into that. It's, you know, it's a whole whole another ball game and and very much like, you know, gossipy, I guess. Um, yeah, so. true. Yeah, I don't know if there's much to this. Also, if you watch like French reality TV, like a lot of the contestants, they don't necessarily speak French very well. Like they make <laughs> grammatical. I'm not being mean, but you do hear like grammatical, like not not too much but there are some like grammar errors and even making mistakes with things like idioms so Mm -hmm. I think some of it is deliberate I think the producers tell them you know make yourself look like an like an like an illiterate idiot Uh, because it's funny you know and so people play up to it and they maybe like (laughs) deliberately misconjugate verbs or something but yeah like there's some yeah there's and also yeah like you say if it's sort of the gossipy style there's not really much to you know some of these shows they're not really based on like much actual content it's just like people having fights or whatever so yeah again it would it would depend but it's it's cool to experiment and maybe you know consider other um yeah other types of shows but no I think you're you're right there with going with fiction kind of like based on the sort of book club format I think that gives people loads to discuss so Awesome. Well, if people are interested in trying out the Language TV Club, where can they find out more? Yeah, so uh, they can go to our website, which is www.languagetvclub.com. Um, and so each month we have two different languages. So, for example, next month in the month of May, we'll have French and Italian. Um, our meetings usually take place on Sundays, sometimes Saturdays, because um, usually that's when most people have time and we do have members from from all over the world so you know everybody's in different time zones so Mm. usually the weekend's the easiest day to to find you know a time that works for everybody in all time zones um and so yeah so if you go on that website you'll see um you can scroll down to the bottom and see which languages are available at the moment which ones are coming up and you can go ahead into the booking page and and sign up there um and we have a couple of different plan options too so if you want to come for one month or if you know you want to come for three months or if you just love learning 
so many languages, you can get an unlimited plan and then just come whenever you want. So a um, couple of options there for you. And as well too, if, if you're not um, interested in, in paying for a discussion at this time, we do do free discussions. Um, sometimes once a quarter, I might be doing them more frequently coming up. Um, but like, for example, not this weekend, but next weekend, we'll have a free French um, like taster event is what I call them. So we'll just be discussing the first episode of a show on that day. So that would be totally free and you can just kind of see what it's like to, to discuss a TV show. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll link to the website so people can go, well, whenever they're watching this in the future or whatever, they can go check it out and see what languages are on that month. And yeah, it's good to know you can try out a free one and, and see what it's all about. Cool. Well, and uh, uh, our Instagram is is very helpful for that too, as well, because we always post what events are happening and and helpful tips and stuff here and there. Um, so that's you know just at Language TV Club. It's pretty easy. And if you're interested in in other things that Polyglot Station as a whole is is starting, like possible game nights in the future, then our Instagram handle for that is at Polyglot Station. Awesome. Right. Well, I think we've got everything we need then to uh, start meeting other people and doing things with languages that don't just involve small talk. So uh, that sounds awesome. So thank you so much, Lauren, for coming on and for chatting about these topics with me. It's really cool to meet and to uh, talk about other people who are doing similar things with languages, movie clubs, TV clubs. I can only hope that we will have more and more uh in in the future because it's such an awesome way to practice languages and to meet other people and to actually use what you've what you've learned so and thank you everybody for watching this is youtube so please like this video subscribe to the channel do all those youtube things that help the algorithm to find the channel and to find this video right thanks everybody see you soon bye